Wednesday, June 19, 2013. That's when the crisis hit. A storm system had moved in and settled on the foothills and along the mountain ranges in southern Alberta and just began to rain. And though it all began here in Canmore with that storm system, within hours it had spread across southern Alberta. We went from having almost a dozen states of local emergency within a few hours to 28 states of local emergency within two days. This flood event changed our landscape. It's changed our lives and it will change our history. This will go down as the worst disaster the province of Alberta has ever experienced. It's not so much a flood, it's, it's more like an erosion event or, or some people liken it to a, a landslide. So you have a lot of material coming down a very steep chute. And so although people had trained and rehearsed for various emergencies, this was the real thing. What we realized was this was a scale and, and order of magnitude that we had never seen before. I'd say within 20 minutes it was over. Unfortunately, the full force of the river hit it, ripped out the storefront. Um, you know, we had <laughs> moccasins, beautiful moccasins, scattered the whole way up Main Street. And if people suffered a lot of destruction, it's years yeah. to come back. The actual height of the water, or the elevation of the water, was quite a bit higher. Uh, one of the other big differences is the velocity of the water was such that it, it made the river move laterally. Okay? So it wasn't just the height of the water, but it was actually the river creating new channels for itself. June 20th, that's a day very few of us will forget here in High River. At uh, 7.04, our council declared a local state of emergency. People don't understand the wall of water that came through this community. You could almost think of it a bit as a bathtub. Uh, when the river rose, it actually filled a bathtub with water. And as the river receded, the water trapped inside that topography was unable to recede and stayed trapped for weeks afterwards. We had to evacuate our entire community to, to deal with this uh, disaster. As you can see, the water is up. Most of these houses are swamped. Cars have been left. 10 18, we declared a state of local emergency because of the impending flood water that was coming towards Calgary. So you can start to do things like uh, mandatory evacuations, movement of large numbers of people. We we're talking to the Provincial Operations Centre. Uh, we were doing a lot of work back and forth between the province. We have a cross-ministry team making sure that we move quickly as we could on the things that needed to be done. So many great stories of so many things that people have done. You know, when the uh, flood hit Calgary, uh, Sexica was hit very hard. Uh, being that it is right in the floodplain, and uh, you know we had over a thousand evacuees uh, that lost lost their homes or had their homes underwater. We had 30 uh, water treatment systems impacted uh, by the flood. So although you don't hear about it in the news all the time, 30 communities had their water services impacted. Uh, pump houses flooded, electrical systems shorted out, pumps damaged, uh, intake structures uh, simply washed away. Those kinds of things all across southern Alberta. This flood event was the greatest natural disaster the province of Alberta has ever seen. There's no doubt about that. But it was no match for the incredible fortitude and spirit that our first responders showed in making sure that Albertans were kept safe and rescued. And some of the people that were working on the emergency, literally right on the creek, their homes were flooding somewhere else. And, and yet they just uh, put that aside, I don't know how, and dealt with the, the overall emergency. You know, we, we had been building a system that would enable us to reach out to other communities and, and to Strathcona County. And so they had a team on the road, on their way. They arrived in, uh, in, in High River in the early hours of the morning. Well, the rescue efforts were, were amazing. Uh, and we actually began uh, evacuating people with uh, combines and rock trucks uh, and boats just to get them to higher ground and to safety. And I remember on that first night, we got a call from Exshaw. They needed cots, blankets, hygiene kits. They had a, a huge number of homes impacted. They were cut off because of the highway. We delivered them 
within, a sh within hours to a site where they were loaded onto the helicopter and then dropped into the community. It was, that's what it was like. At the peak of what was going on, we had about 200 people working out of this facility. Um, it was incredible to watch the rhythm they got into, how quickly they were making decisions and how effective those decisions were. Medicine had actually received about 48 hours of extra warning and they, that was, they were able to bring in the, uh, the armed forces. When we first arrived in Medicine Hat, I went to the Emergency Operations Centre and met some of the key players. And they asked me what I brought to the table and I said 300 soldiers. The ones that were on buses were taken directly to the site and started building sandbag dikes that night. One other thing is uh, Sunday morning, I requested to my boss an additional 200 soldiers. Four or five hours before the expected crest, um, the dikes were in place and we were just doing management to see how it went. And as you know, these armed forces folks are very well trained and the amount of work they can get done in a day is incredible. Uh, as we managed the event, even in the early days, it seemed extraordinary that we would be dealing with response while simultaneously thinking about recovery. So many people were here helping in some way. It's a part of the character of the people that live in this region, perhaps across Alberta, perhaps across Canada. Just the way people pitched in and, and did whatever, I'm sorry, <laughs> whatever they possibly could to help, to um, contribute, without exception. The volunteers came, the wonderful volunteers, like, amazing. Neighbor helping neighbor, it was impressive to see. We were averaging about 3,000 volunteers a day in those early days, and we were so grateful for that because we certainly needed that kind of help. The volunteerism, the spirit of the city, the ability of people to work together and help out not only people within Calgary but in surrounding communities, I think, speaks to the, the, the nature of uh, what people are in Alberta and how we all work together. And, you know, there's a spirit of volunteerism that I think is second and under across Canada. Your heart just, you know, breaks for the people. I mean, so devastating, but also it really warms your heart when you see how everyone is looking after everyone else. I think we've also redefined what we are as Albertans. The worst disaster in the province's history affected a lot of Albertans, but it impacted every single one of us. And it demonstrated that leadership rises up in troubled times. From our provincial and municipal leadership, to our volunteers and our first responders, from our small business to our industry. And we demonstrated to the rest of the world that we are a province full of leaders that are there to support each other in troubled times. We were challenged. We will prevail. We're Albertans. What we have to do is not just rebuild, but rebuild in such a way as to minimize future impacts. And if we do it properly and we do it smart, we can protect many, many homes and families from having this happen again. The diking projects that we're doing are, uh, are they're significant. You know, we're taking all the dikes and bringing them up to the 2013 water level plus adding a meter of freeboard on it for extra protection. And I can certainly say that the, the speed at which we're moving is unprecedented in my personal experience. Uh, I'm, uh, what I'm getting is resources and decisions as quickly as, as possible. The speed that we're going at in this recovery is unbelievable. When you look at the extent of our disaster in this town, Canada's largest natural disaster, it's not going to be fixed in one year. As soon as you step foot in that town, you could feel the spirit of how they were going to rebuild and make that a better place. Since we've been through this, it has really brought this community tight. We've never been this close in, in this town that, uh, you know, and that, that's the spirit of this town. We will not, we're not going anywhere. The things that have come out of it, uh, to me, not only show hope in a community, but talk about human spirit and talk about how we're connected beyond things. This is what Albertans are all about. This is it. You step up and you do whatever you can for your neighbors because it could be you tomorrow. <laughs> the most important things in life aren't things at all. We're going to progress and we're going to be the place that people want to move to and live in because of that spirit and that community. Mm -hmm.